Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on source follower. The source follower configuration of MOSFET is also known as the common drain configuration. Here we can see that the input input is applied onto the gate side and the output is sensed uh, on the source side. The VDD is connected to the drain. In this tutorial we will be trying to find the voltage gain the input impedance and the output impedance of this source follower configuration. So let's start off by drawing the small cell model for this circuit. Here we can observe that we have an NMOS transistor and the small cell model for NMOS is this, where the V1 is between the source and the gate terminal. Um, you can observe that the RS is connected between the source and the ground. So we'll have RS here. And the input is being applied at the gate side. So we'll have an input at the gate side. Here we can observe that the drain terminal of the MOSFET is connected to the VDD which is a constant voltage source and as we know that all the constant voltages or current sources are set to zero in the case of small cell model. So the drain in the case of small cell model will go to ground also known as AC ground. So now we are going to find the voltage gain. For the source follower well there are many methods to find the voltage gain for source follower the one that i'm going to use involves the thevenin equivalent circuit so let's just try to find the thevenin equivalent of this circuit here we now need to find this vth and to find the vth we have to disconnect this high active circuitry in red from the outside world. So let's just do it. So to find this VTH, you can observe that there is no path for GM V1 current to flow. So this is going to be equal to zero. And if that is zero, then it suggests that V1 is going to be zero. And if V1 is zero, then V in is going to be equal to VTH. Uh, how did I find this out? Well, you can apply KVL in this loop. So now that I have found the Thevenin equivalent voltage, let me just try to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance here as well. And to do that, I, I need to redraw this small cell model. So let's just do it. So I have V in. I have V1 that is connected to GM V1 and drain terminal goes to ground and this is the point where I have to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Now um, there are a few steps to follow to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance here and the first one is to kill all independent sources. Now here only V in is the independent sources, so we need to set it to zero. So let's set it to zero. Second step is that from the outside world, we have to apply external voltage Vx. So apply Vx from outside world and then with the application of Vx current Ix will flow and the ratio of this Vx over Ix is going to be the R Thevenin. So let's just do it. Now let's make an observation here. We can see that the positive terminal of the Vx is connected to the negative terminal of V1 
and the positive terminal of V1 is connected to the negative terminal of Vx. So therefore we can say that V1 is actually equal to minus Vx. Now let's apply a KCL on this node and you can see that the current Ix is entering, the current G1, Gm, V1 is entering. So therefore the sum of the current entering the node must be equal to the sum of current leaving the node. So therefore we have Ix plus Gm V1 equal to zero. Now if I apply the Gm value in this equation, I'll be left with Ix minus Gm Vx equal to zero. Now if I rearrange this equation for this ratio, I'll get Vx over Ix to be one over Gm. And that thing was the Thevenin equivalent resistance. So now we have found the Thevenin resistance as well as Thevenin voltage. So let's redraw the circuit. So we have Thevenin voltage of V in, which was found over here. And we have found the Thevenin resistance to be 1 over GM. So this is our Thevenin circuit. Now there was, if you remember, there was an RS connected here, which we removed for the purpose of finding Thevenin equivalent circuit. So let's just plug, place in the RS in our Thevenin equivalent model. That RS was connected from here to the ground. So we'll have an RS here. And the output was observed at the RS. So this is our final circuit that we are going to use to find the voltage gain. Now, if I measure this V out using the voltage divided formula, that is going to be equal to RS over 1 over GM plus RS times V in. And if I bring this VN down here, I'll get a V, which is the ratio of V out over V in, to be equal to RS over 1 over GM plus RS. So this is my voltage gain for source follower configuration. Now there is an important comment to make and that is this RS resistance is the resistance that is tied between the source and the AC ground. So let me write this thing in words. So the voltage gain is the ratio of the resistance tied between source and AC ground this is the 1 over GM plus resistance tied between source and AC AC ground this is source So please keep this uh, formulation in your mind because we will need this later on. Or maybe actually let's just try to use this thing now. Um, to do that, let's just assume that lambda is no more zero. That is, we have a channel length modulation. Now, if you remember from the history, that if the channel modulation is there, then we have a resistance R0 tied between the drain and the source. So therefore, when lambda is assumed to be non-zero, we'll have R0 tied between source and the AC ground, as well as the RS tied between source and the ground. So the voltage gain formula in the case of non-zero lambda will be equal to rs plus r naught or rather they are both in parallel so it's going to be rs in parallel with r naught 
divided by 1 over gm plus rs in parallel with r naught so that is the beauty of remembering the formula of voltage gain in this form let's now try to find the input impedance of the source follower now to do that let's go back to the first figure here we can see that the gate terminal draws a very little current at low frequencies so we can say that the input impedance is going to be very high so the input impedance is going to be very high at at low frequencies so now let's just try to find the output impedance of source follower and to do that let me add some space here Now to find the output impedance, let me redraw the Thevenin equivalent circuit and let me just presume that lambda is not zero. So we'll have one over GM and the R naught tied between the source and the uh, drain terminal. And then we'll have RS. And this is where we observe the output. So to find the output impedance, we need to follow a few steps. And the first step is that we need to kill all the independent sources in the circuitry. Here we have got V in as our independent source. So we need to kill or set it to be zero. So let's just do that. let's just set it to be zero and apply external voltage Vx due to which a current Ix will flow and the ratio of Vx to Ix will give us output impedance and if we look at here carefully we observe that output impedance is equal to 1 over gm and parallel to R0 and parallel to rs so this is my output impedance of source follower that is all on the source follower i'll see you in the next video thank you for listening